This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It's a reaction video. It's a video of opinion. Uh, if it has to do with grammar, I'm going to be reacting to the grammar and its relation to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar. And if it's not about grammar, then I'm going to be relating to the, reacting to the subject matter in the video. It's never personal. And actually, this video serves a dual purpose, not only for entertainment, but also it's my volition that uh, I help to thicken the skin of viewers these days who seem to get offended by every single little thing on the internet. Also, for those of you who uh, look at such things, the th what I'm doing with my hands is involuntary. There are no uh, hand gestures or anything going on here, except for maybe if I do this, but uh, it's just, you know, speaking in front of a camera, you either have your hands like this, like this, like this, like this, whatever it is nothing to do with any type of uh, gesturing so again it's nothing personal in these videos it's just for entertainment purposes this reaction is a reaction to a video made by a channel called sts deprogrammed and uh, this was sent to me and i checked it out it's interesting I have not watched this entire video, just like the first uh, 30 seconds of it. So I'm going to watch it and uh, give my comments as a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar tutor, and my cognition of this technology and so on and so forth. Here we go. STS, here again, back with Lady Crown. Hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe button, get it out there. And yeah, this one is going to be about the master teacher, David Wynn Miller. And this man here, I'm telling you, <laughs> he cracked the um, codes for all the languages on the planet. And um, yeah, I had to bring Lady Crown for this one because um, she's been studying this man for many years and she knows a lot about him. I know a bit about him, but not as much as Lady Crown, you know. And yeah, where can we start with David Wynn Miller, you know, because this man is, um, he's, he's different. He's different. Isn't he? um, he's been off planet. He's... Um, He's done so many things in his life. He had a, he had a experience that. Did he just say David Wynn Miller is off planet? What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. Really changed his whole perception of life and made him want to um, study the languages and really understand what's going on and start to crack the codes because his thing is about one word, one meaning, and. Um, yeah, he really cracked the code, so where can we start? Where can we start with David Wynn Miller? Well, he's, um, he's, he's the saviour. If you ever wanted to have a saviour in your life, then David Wynn Miller is that saviour. Okay, i got to stop this right here, right now. Think about this, folks. If you are like uh, these individuals and you're looking for a saviour, then correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar may not be for you. Because with correct sentence structure, it puts an individual in a place of autonomy where if they need saving, I'm not saying anyone needs saving, but if you do, you can save yourself. And I'm not sure what she's talking about. I mean, what, what does anyone need saved from, really? Um, but anyways, I just wanted to put point that out there that that type of mentality definitely from my studies have you know directly correlates with an authoritarian construct someone who feels that there's that they need saved something outside of themselves is going to save them other than them i am cracking the code on the language because it, you know like mathematics number two and number two equals four nobody can argue about that no disputing no wars no fighting because yeah. it is four but when you use a language that has so many different meanings here which here am i talking about the one where you're listening the one that's stuck on the side of your head the here over there you, you hear what i'm saying just yeah. the language itself is bastardized and it's corrupt i think he said after two million words they um, got it down to 756 
So all you have to learn is those 756 words and you'll be speaking in the correct sentence structure, communication, passe, syntax, syntax grammar. This is a wonderful opinion and this pertains to Colin David Ivan Winkle Miller and what he did and what he used in his contracts or claims to have used in his contracts. I have no certification of that at all, of that number that she's talking about. My own code dictionary is close to 2,000 words and it's growing. So while they may only need 700 and some words, uh, myself, I prefer to leave my options open and I've authorized my own dictionary for my own contracts that governs my construct. So what she's saying there is directly pertaining to David Wynn Miller um, and anyone else out there. You, I mean, maybe you can use 200 words and be fine. Maybe you use 3,000 words and be fine. It's up to you as authority of your construct as to how many words you would use to contract. As long as it's one word, one meaning, one congruency, one function. Yeah. yeah. And by doing that, by learning that, you can correct the wrongs that have been done against. It's been perpetrated against all of us, you know, since the day that we were, that, that we were born, basically. You know, you have to look at David Wimbley. He's got lots of... Um, YouTube um, videos, some of them seven are like hours, yeah. seven hours, nine hours, you might think, oh my, but there, I think there's one where you can get like little bite sizes where it, it runs from one to 17 and, and there's about 30 minutes each. And what I've done is literally downloaded them on, on my YouTube channel and I can go back and watch them over and over again. And when you get the small bite size, it starts to resonate with you and you start to understand exactly what you're saying. Because you said no country ever went to war over a math problem. But when there was a declaration of war signed, what was that? That was a piece of paper that was put in front of somebody and, you know, Neville Chamberlain or whoever it was mm. could put their, their, their um, signature on it, which is, um, it's, which, which is a scroll, which is cursive, it's a facsimile. And that was it. People will start firing guns and cannons because their language, their language performance isn't there. And that's one thing you have to do. You have, you have to learn how to stop and correct the language because, believe it or not, when you go into their courts, the, the, the judges, the lawyers, everybody involved in it knows that no law or fact will ever be tried in court. I, I've heard this, what she's saying there, that no law or fact can be tried in court. Has anyone out there been able to certify this in YouTube land, other than the fact that David Wynn Miller has said that? Anyone? Can you find that anywhere in any law book? If you can... Please send it to me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I don't strongly doubt it. I mean, it is very probable that such a thing exists, but I would like to see it with my own eyes. No law and no fact will be tried in court. He calls them that. Then, well, That's exactly yeah, what they are. The this, that, their so performance, they, they, they're putting on a performance where it's all acting and they've got you through presumption and assumption to just take, in, take on that role as that legal fiction and then answer to a parking ticket or answer to something that, you know, if you haven't caused any loss, any injury, any harm, then you've done nothing. You owe nobody anything, but you've got a, a, a society and a world that says, you know something, we're going to tax you, we're going to charge you, we're going to give you permission to drive, we're going to give you... Per and everything that you register, as I told you before, you give away because the, the word, the, the, the prefix RE means no. Receding hairline, receding gums. Yeah, it, what does it mean? It's going, but it means no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they've done to us. Yes, she's correct that RE means no, but she's not actually telling why it means no. She's giving examples, but she's not specifically saying why RE means no. So I will tell you why RE means no. Any prefix or suffix that negates the now space means no. And that's what RE means. Because it negates the now space, sometimes it means against, sometimes it means again. Uh, but any prefix or suffix that negates the now space is a particle of negation in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Without our knowledge, so what's happened is really quite wicked, but what you've done, we're correcting the language, 
was was it, the fact they could go into court. I mean, he'd go into some courtrooms and they would literally just shut it down yeah. and walk away. Because I'd also like certification of that. Um, what she's saying there. Is that her first-hand knowledge or is she relaying stories that she heard someone else say that she hasn't certified for herself? That's why I personally don't go into stories like that. Because if you really truly had closure on correct sentence structure, you would realize you have to be very careful what you put out there. Because you get people, she just said, we get caught up in, you know, we talk about assumption, presumption. Correct sentence structure removes that. There is no presumption, assumption. But now what she's asking you to do right now is to assume and presume that her story is true, that people just, you know, run out of the courtroom. Let's get some film on that, guys. Any, hey, you out there who claim these things that judges go running out the courtroom. Where's the footage? Let's see it. Come on. Pictures or it didn't happen, all right? Because they knew what he was going to do. Because everything that you're saying, you're speaking or whatever you might think that you're doing in that courthouse, you're not even there, you're dead. Um, I, this is just gone to now. What um, triggered him again? to really study um, the language um, it was to do with his children yes yeah. yes yeah. he wanted to yeah. have custody of his children when um, um, his, I think it was his first wife and, and him split up obviously he wanted to have um, custody shared custody of his children and um, it, it wasn't happening went into court many many times and um, he just couldn't get access to his children he was every, every which way he yeah. was blocked a man wanting to spend time with his children you think it's a simple thing they're not, no longer together with the, with the wife or or, or the, the the woman in his life let's just get you know come together and sort yeah, this yeah. out we don't need a third party but you know because in marriage when you marry you do what you sign a certificate yeah. yes so now they own that marriage certificate and they own you and then you've got to go back through that procedure to then get divorced mm. and it's all messy but everybody along the Every step along the way, somebody's making money off your marriage and then when it doesn't work out, off your divorce and then the settlement and then the children. And he just couldn't get any recompense. He couldn't get it resolved. But that judge taught him a lesson because what he did yeah. was the catalyst for him learning yeah. to crack the code on the language. And he went back into that court and that yeah. same judge was disbarred. Yeah. Got him cancelled out. Is that true? Does anyone, can anyone certify what she's saying right there? I realize she's just repeating a claim that David Whit Miller made, but I just wonder if anybody out there has researched that. I think I tried to a few years ago, but I uh, wasn't able to come up with anything concrete that uh, backed up what, what he was claiming as far as that goes. Now, as far as the courtroom goes and things like that, what they're saying is, is true. Um... The only way that that referee comes in, that third party comes in, is if you and someone else invite them in or consent for them to come in. If you and the other contract party can come to closure on your own, you don't need a court. And that doesn't have anything to do with correct sentence structure. It just has to do with common sense and logic. And a lot of people don't realize that, but here's the thing. A lot of people also rely on the fiction system and unfortunately <laughs> um or fortunately depending upon where you stand the system is corrupt and it is unbalanced and it is biased and it is biased turning towards certain genders certain genders of parents as far as custody cases and divorce cases and uh that's just the way it is and so some people take advantage of that some people who are malicious and of course the court system doesn't care as she said they're just there to make money on every single little thing that's what it's all about it's what i've said for years follow the dollar sign you will find out the volition behind what's going on with the fiction at least twice because i remember him saying that um that pain led into thoughts and led into wisdom mm. it triggered him to really find out what was really going on so he could, you know, really come back with um, authority within how he presented, presented himself again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, big up to David Wynn Miller. And he's actually a 97th degree Mason. Yeah. Yeah. That is not correct. David, out of his own mouth, said that he was 92nd degree Mason. Now, of course, again, there's no way to certify that. 
because number one, Freemasonry is a secret society. They're sworn an oath of secrecy. So one thing uh, I've always done my whole life, as far as with regards to masonry and the study thereof, which I have studied it, I have some very hard to come by books, let's put it that way, some very private books that came actually out of lodges. I would never trust a mason. I don't care what degree you are. If you're a Freemason, I don't trust you because you have taken an oath that goes above and beyond you your family, your wife, your children, your parents, you have sworn an oath of loyalty to something above all of that. And so how could anyone ever trust you? Not even probably your own Masonic brothers or sisters would trust you. But in any case, that's how I feel about it. And David Wynn Miller is no exception. I have a lot of honor and a lot of grace for him, for his kindness. He was definitely a good guy that I could see. You know, I was blessed to have been in communication with him on the phone and things like that for the last year of his life. However, knowing what I know about Masons, I definitely would not trust him. Um, um, you've got to listen over. You don't just listen for half an hour. No. Trust me, it's, it's something that... A lot know, of things will go over your head yeah. because he's speaking in a different language, yeah. because he's broke the codes. So when you hear him speak, you're going to have to learn the language to really understand what he's actually saying. So now these individuals are saying you'd have to learn the language. And by that, I think they mean quantum grammar to be able to understand what David Wynn Miller is saying. That's not true. Number one, I haven't seen any evidence that either one of these individuals have anything beyond a very basic beginner's theoretical knowledge of correct sentence structure. I haven't seen any evidence that they know anything about it. And number two, I can't, there is no David Wynn Miller video that I've ever seen. And I've watched hundreds of hours where he speaks in, in correct sentence structure in the video. He uses plain English. He uses plain, simple English to teach because that is how you would teach another language or grammar to someone else. You'd have to find that common trade medium, i.e. plain English, because he speaks plain English to be able to teach the language you're teaching. So your audience, your students would learn, would know plain English. You would use plain English to teach this other language. It's the same thing if you went to a Spanish class. The teacher would have to be able to speak Spanish and English, and the students would have to be able to speak and understand English and able to learn Spanish via the teacher's using of plain English to teach the Spanish. Yeah, he is a great master teacher for people to tap into because if you really um, learn his work you can actually free yourself from a lot of um, oh my goodness a lot of bondage absolutely you know I mean? absolutely you, you can get you you start to stand up in your power you know what i mean and literally challenge them on the language because it's a language that's not correct and you can stop and correct that language your name in the all caps is not you that's a persona that was given to you and that persona will be used for all sorts of fines or whatever but they're not writing to you but as long as you've as long as you may join them with that then I, I guess they are like with your council tax your name will come in a box mm. and it'll be all the caps or it might only be it might not be all caps but it'd be in a box it'd be something where it tells you that it's off the page but then you go oh that's uh, oh yeah my my so-and-so bills the ride well then you, yeah. you said it so it is but it's not and um yeah, this is coming to me now. Remember that um, situation that I had with um, the kidney operations that changed his whole life. And um, he ended up, um, his adrenal glands got taken out mm. by, by accident, wasn't mm. it? By yeah. um, a, sur a surgeon that wasn't, you know, it was a rookie surgeon. Mm. And um, it changed his whole body's chemistry to the point where he could write with his left and right hand at the same, same time. time. He could write documents you know, 2,000 word documents in one night, mm. just boom. And um, this man, he's, like I said um, previously, he's different. He's just a different guy, a uh, different type of guy and um, remarkable man. He literally has um, gave the world a platform to take their power back. It's free humanity. Yeah, yeah. It really has, it's free yeah. humanity. You need to, I mean, when you hear about quantum, you're hearing about quantum computing and quantum financial system, if you're hearing about what you're not hearing about the quantum language. Yeah. That's what it is, quantum language, correct grammar, sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. You're not taught that at school, we're taught bullshit, as you already know.
pronounce words yeah. that don't make sense, sugar, you get the SH sound, but it's spelled SU, already telling your brain and tricking your brain into accept that when you see the SU, you now say sugar and you don't even question that there's a, do you know what I'm saying? And it's all done by design to take you away from your true, true greatness. You know what I'm saying? You came into this world, you, it was, that was your crowning moment when you were birthed into this world. You, you're then told that you're, you know, you just say, mere mortal. No, 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 you're sovereign. Free, yeah. free as the day that you were born. Now, this term sovereign, I think it's it's misconstrued. Since they're talking about language and grammar, which is sort of my thing, if you look at what sovereign means, no one is sovereign. No one comes into this world sovereign. How can a baby be sovereign? To be sovereign means that you create your own currency, you have your own fuel, you have your own food, all those things. You're basically your own country. How can a baby be sovereign? It doesn't make logical sense. And I don't know any individual on earth who is sovereign right now. Now, if you want to talk about spiritually sovereign, cool. Whatever that means for you. But quite literally, using the grammar, which this video is about, there is no such thing as a sovereign. Certainly not a sovereign baby because babies are dependent upon their parents, especially their mother. But being in, in an open prison all your life and not really realised it, but you can actually take control of that, take control of your life and those around you and take back what's rightfully yours. You know what I mean? Your freedom is yours. Yeah. But guess what? It's not going to be handed to you. So guess what you're going to have to do? You have to take it back. Yeah, you have to tap in. You have to take it back. Yeah. Same so will tell you, I've had, um, you know, uh, um, I call them third party interlopers come to my vessel in dry dock but I captain my vessel and tell me about the putting clump on my car and they're going to take my car and all the rest of it well with the car is parked about there using the knowledge with the knowledge, yeah, your knowledge is your they just power. took that clump off my car and went about their business I've had you know magistrates court I didn't even appear at the magistrates court I just my court was my four corner rule your document that you send to court that's your court the four corner rule and that's all I used One and they had to walk away yeah. you know what I'm saying because I knew exactly what I was doing if I didn't cause any loss harm or injury then who am I now going to pay this hundred pound to or two hundred pounds to what what am I paying for when I've not caused anybody any harm loss or injury but the, because it's their acts and their statutes and their legislation they want to impose it on your legal fiction your all caps or your mister or your miss or whatever you want to call yourself you know what I'm saying? That's what they do. Okay, so what she just said there is very valuable, and I like the way she conveyed that there. And this doesn't have to necessarily do with correct sentence structure at all. Um, this is just common sense stuff, right? Common sense stuff. Stopping trespass. Taking autonomy and authority over yourself and what you're doing. Now, I don't know where these individuals are from, what country, whatever you want to call it. But here where I'm from, there are contracts in place like car registrations, car, you know, fiction insurance policies, fiction driving licenses and, and all these things that you agree to. And if someone comes to take your car, then that means somewhere along the line, you've broken one of those agreements that you agreed to. You supposedly read the contract and agreed to it. So it becomes a little different there. Now, if it was agreed to in nascience, then, yes, of course, you can use correct sentence structure to stop that trespass. Now, as they said earlier, you got to stop and correct the grammar. That is not, um, by my uh, experience, not the correct way to convey what this grammar actually does. Because you can't force someone to correct their grammar. Then you're no better than they are. You're forcing them to do something they don't want to do. But what you can do is force them to stop hurting you. Stop trespassing upon you using the grammar. Which would just, you know, in some cases would be uh, showing them, telling them to show you a correct contract where you agreed for them to, in this case, take your car. Or showing you a correct contract where they have authority to take your car or that you agreed to it or number two or three actually to go on vacation 
If they can't do a correct grammar performance or show any of the things, they can just go on vacation. And uh, that's when they take the clamp off and, and go on vacation. But it's not about stopping and correcting their grammar. It's about identifying a fictitious conveyance of grammar. And if you agree to those terms and conditions in nascence, you're correcting your own contracts at that point, not theirs, yours. And then giving your terms and conditions and then but also, caveat emptor, at any given time, the fiction can come in and smash you because they have the bigger guns and clubs. It doesn't matter how correct you are. You always have to keep that in mind. That's why I tell people, how much of a bloody nose do you want to get with this stuff? You always have to be cognizant of the worst case scenario and be accepting of it. And if you're okay with it, if you're okay with every possible scenario, every possible consequence, then my prediction is 9.9 times out of 10, you're going to be successful in using correct sentence structure, which is, of course, contingent upon your closure of correct sentence structure. Yeah, and um, I have to mention this man here, one of um, David Wimmeler's um, students, um, Mark Christopher, and I know you're touching to Mark Christopher. Um, I'm a student. Yeah, so you're, yeah you're a student to him, and um, yeah, big old... Well, that explains the complete lack of evidence that these individuals know anything about the grammar. Because I myself, back in 2017, was actually a student of colon mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher. And while I did learn some, some cool things about courts and tricks and traps and things like that, and a couple things about parse, I didn't learn anything about syntax or correct sentence structure. And, um, well, Let's just put it that way. It explains the complete lack of uh, evidence that these individuals know anything about the grammar. So he's got um, a channel channel on YouTube and um, yes, yeah, called Mark Christopher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, quite simple. And yeah, search him up and tap into him. He's a great student of um, David Wimmeler's work. And um, yeah, he can really help you on your journey. But um, yeah, I thought you will tap into David Wimmeler to really get his name out there because he needs to be... Um, promoted out there more and um he's reached a lot of people but just not in the mainstream <laughs> yeah you know and we have to change that and we, we have to yeah we, we have, have to, to change, change the narrative yeah turn off your television sit down there with your children then you want to change it but change is modification and modification is perjury ah i'm just being funny here or trying to be it's progeny them then that spring forth from your loins and start learning start learning the real way of the world start learning the real language so you can actually deal with these actors out there because they're all playing a part they're all acting and guess what you're an actor too because you're going along yeah, with it yeah 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 you're, 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 you know what i'm saying you've been programmed you've been programmed to go along with it you have to change it you have to break the code well, the code's already been cracked for you what you've got to do it's now is to use it to live your life to free yourself from the bondage and from the slave because this this is it. i don't care about what you have in life and your car you have you're enslaved as long as your vehicle is registered with dvla it doesn't belong to you you're the keeper your document says registered what keeper even if you've got your house and you say you've paid off oh my mortgage paid off i'm in a whole no bag of money if you look in your mortgage deeds it'll say that you're a tenant so you're a tenant in your home home you don't even own it mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying that's the trickery and the fraud that's been perpetrated on on, on mankind what they're talking about is the fiction, and that's if you choose to participate with the fiction, then what she's saying is true. It's true. If you choose to participate with the fiction. But if you learn correct sentence structure and you become a steward of your contracts, then that is no longer true. Contract is by consent. But we have to correct it. They're not going to do it. We have to. And there are ways and means for us to do that. We just got to get up off our backsides, open up our eyes and look at what's happening in the world. And in the last two years, if you haven't seen what's been going off, then I don't know where you've been. It's time to take it all back lawfully, not legally, because the word legal means the undoing of God's law. Lawfully, take it all back. Legally means the undoing of God's law. I'm going to have to look that up, see if that's what that means. Proto-Indo-European root LEG, which means collect, gather, and an AL is contract.
And then if you use the Ly as they're using it, Ly is a particle of negation, which which literally kills the tangibility of of the gathering contract, the collecting contract. I don't see anything about God's law because, well, that's a whole nother topic. But in any case, that's not what uh, the nativity root meaning of legally is. It's not what they're saying. They're perhaps talking about something else. Maybe they've created their own little meaning for the word in their own little construct, but it has nothing to do with what it actually means uh, from the earliest nativity root etymology of the word legal. Yeah, and um, one key thing that David Wimmeller really shows you is that the pen is might mightier than the sword. And um, like he says, you know, this world is full of contracts. And if you learn the proper language, <laughs> you'll be contracting in the right way. Yeah, absolutely. With the, with the um, right grammar as well. Um, yeah, and, you can yeah, also, yeah. if you, they the did take down um, David Wimmeller's website some time ago, but it's. Um, it's it, gone back off. Um, yeah, you can get to it from Mark's, um, Mark Christopher. Um, dot com his website it's got a link there for for, for david's um, website he's taken over it and, and so therefore um you know can do what he needs to do to maintain it so if you visit mark christopher's website you'll be able to click on david Wimbledon and the set of the information up that he had on his website you just have to go there and have a look yeah and there is a book that you can also get um but that has to be ordered from america but all that information is there so you can start learning quantum grammar why not why not because it really is what you need to tap into yeah write your own contract write your own terms and conditions in the correct sentence structure not babble adverb verb and, and pronouns because Pro pronoun nouns. means no 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 pr means no in means no yeah. re means no, no. de no. means no D you know yeah. so we say you go into the bank to make a you know, to deposit some money if de means no so it's no positive you're not you have not put anything in there that's why it don't belong to you you're not knowing there it comes to the bank and in the banking contract in terms of condition it says once you've made a deposit it no longer belongs to you it belongs to the bank so it's all fraud it's all trickery time to call them out and time to do something about it stop accepting that well that's just the way it is no it isn't we've got an opportunity now to change all of that especially yeah. when it comes to your financial um, wealth now what they're saying right there i would caution the listener the viewer to think about that for a minute I don't think all bankers are fraudsters. Uh, you know, there are people that work at banks that think they're doing a service for people. They're family people. They have children. Um, I know people in banking. Maybe people have family members in banking. They're not fraudsters and they're not out to, to screw anybody over. No one is twisting your arm to go to the bank. Okay, so... I think this is a little bit of a, an attitude of a us against them type of thing is not the only time that correct sentence structure would need to be used or could be used in, in, in the correct way is to stop a trespass when a bank is literally trying to steal your money, which can happen, or a government, or an IRS, or a United States Treasury, or a Federal Reserve, or whatever it is. Or a collection agency. But it always has to be put in the context of rule one, rule equal. What's the scenario? If you don't know what you don't know, then how can you say that all of it is a fraud? If the people perpetrating don't even know it's a fraud. They only know it if you tell them it's a fraud. And how does that make any sense? I mean, come on. You know what I mean? You take control, become your own banker, and you know how to do that because I've been talking about it since day one with the cryptocurrencies and the precious metals. So it's time to rise and shine, just like I'm in Rise, bossing out now. Yeah, <laughs> just no, me, it's no, beautiful just, up yeah, here. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's it from me, stuff. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I think it's so David Wimela, you know. Um, yeah. He really shows you the illusions that create hella confusion, mm -hmm. you know. And when you really tap into him, <laughs> he'll give you so much knowledge, man. But, Absolutely. Um, big ups to him. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, that's all I've got to say for this one. And yeah. Good food, good mood. If you're having good food, then you're definitely going to have a good mood. So make sure you get your fruits and veggies down, um, yeah. And your alkaline food. And you're definitely going to have a good mood. And yeah, you know, I transition. No finish line for me. Just like goggles. No finish line for me. 
and Lady Crown as well. No, I think so. And you as well that have tapped into this video. And yeah, Lady Crown and STS over and out. Peace and blessings. You know? Peace. So my overall gist uh, and impression of this video, reaction to it, is that these two individuals definitely, I think they're they're good people. I don't sense any type of malicious volition behind them at all. I also don't sense any grammar knowledge behind them, and that's understandable because of who the teacher is. Um, but as I've said in the past, I'm a big fan of whatever works. So if whatever they're doing works, blessings, and you know. More power to him, for sure. But this is another grammar reaction video, and I don't, uh, there's really no grammar to react to. It's just them uh, giving their impression of David Wynn Miller, and to the best of their knowledge, what the grammar actually is. And um, if either one of them, the STS fellow or the Lady Crown uh, individual, if they want to actually learn the grammar, if they're serious about it, they can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com at this email address right here. And I'll set up a, a consult and we'll see if they are ready to learn it. I'm out. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge, and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure.